Hi, this is Sean Conley from Epic Games, and in this video, we're going to learn how to make some procedural cameras in Unreal Editor for virtual production. Taking some more inspiration from the virtual production talk that Epic gave at Seagraph 2019, it's become the section where they talk about procedural cameras. And if you hit play here, you see that they're just a set of cameras that can move around and follow whatever they have deemed for them to look at. And they have this nice flow and offset to it. So it's a very smooth transition. It's not like it's nailed down to any one thing. So we wanted to be able to grab and use this for our shoot. So let's hop into Unreal here and figure out how we can make this ourselves. So here's the end result of what we're going to make. What you have here is you have a target actor. We want to be able to say, hey, follow this. And then we want to catch up time basically how long or how smooth of a transition is it going to be back and forth. So right now I have this cone and the cine camera uh, under this empty actor, right? And the empty actor is targeted to this cube. So if I move the cube, you see that the cone and the camera move along with it. And it's this smooth interpolation between the two. Now, if I were to go here and I want to make this really fast, it would be a, a very fast interpolation between the two transforms, almost like it's nailed to it. And then we can go here and we can make this you know, really slow. And it'll be a really slow interpolation between the two. So let's hop in here and let's figure out how we can do it. Let's go in the content browser, make a new blueprint. The actor, you can name it blueprint, whatever you like. Double click here to open it up. Drag this over. Pop in the event graph here. No, we don't need any of these. Now, for the event to fire this, we are going to use the live link protocol. So, live link is basically something that ticks the editor forward because we constantly want to be checking our viewport to see when this is moved. So, for this, make sure that the live link plugin is loaded right here. And under add, we'll add a live link controller and then right click add event on live link updated. Live link will constantly tick the engine forward. So we can use that as our event to fire off all of our logic. So there's a few things that we know that we want to do. We want to be able to get transforms from a certain actor. And then we want to set those transforms on another actor. The first thing that we're going to want to be able to do is figure out how we can bring the cubes transforms into our blueprint here. How we're going to do that is we're going to make a variable. We're going to make that target actor. This is the actor that we want to target. And we're going to make this actor type. I like to make a lot of my actor types soft references. What this will do is if you set it to an actor and all of a sudden that actor is no longer in your scene, the blueprint won't fail. It just won't do anything. So it's a soft reference. And then we also want to make this instance editable or public so that we can see it in the engine right here. If you don't have this public or instance editable, if we compile our blueprint here and bring it in, you won't see it there. And this is the same as this. Then you can link to something in the editor. So if we hold down control and drag this in, we will get that actor. And then from there, we know we want to get the transforms of that actor. So actor transform. Great. Let's move that down here. And then we know that we're going to want to be able to set this empty actor's transforms to these transforms. So let's go ahead and drag in our default scene root. And let's go to set world transforms. And if we click on context sensitive, we can have blueprints be extra helpful and set default scene root for us. We don't even need that. 
Now let's take these transforms, set it to the new transforms, link up to our event, and compile. This is our new blueprint here in the world. If we come over here and we set this to cube, now let's make a cylinder this time. Make the cylinder movable and put the cylinder under this BP fellow actor. Let's zero this out. Yes. There we go. So the actor is right here. The reason why, again, instead of putting the logic on the cylinder, we put the logic on an empty actor is so that you know we can put anything we want under here and it will inherit the transforms. And also we have the freedom to offset it out, which is very handy. So now if we move this over, let's hide our other one. We see that it's following the transforms, which is great. We see that it's a little too rigid, right? We want to make this a little smoother. So we want to smooth out the interpolation between the two transforms. In Unreal Engine, there's this node called T interp2. And if you read it, it says, tries to reach target transform based on distance from current position, giving a nice smooth feeling when tracking the position. Sounds great. That's exactly what we want. There's current and target, and these are transforms. Anything that's orange will be a transform. So we can hold down Alt and click to disconnect that. Let's grab our target and move it to our target. And let's grab our current, copy that. We want to get the transforms on this current. So get world transform. There we go. And set that to our current. So we can plug delta prime right into here. And then the interpolation speed will be how fast it matches the transforms. You know, basically how um, floaty or laggy it'll be. So we want to go ahead and promote the store variable. And it's called interpolation speed. We want to see this in the, in the editor to be able to change it and not have to come in here and change it and compile every time. So let's make that public or instance editable. Let's hook up the transforms here. And let's compile. Go back in here, grab our follow actor. You see now we have this interpolation speed. So if we make this really fast, again, it'll be really tight onto it. But if we make this a lower number, you'll see that it's really slow and smooth. And we can probably find a happy medium here. There we go. We made this and rolled on set with it and started using it, and it was working out perfectly. But then directors would come through and say, this is great, but I only want it to follow on X, or I only want it to follow on Z, or I don't want it to follow up and down. I just want it to follow left and right. So how can we do that? So let's go back in here. And we know that what we're, that what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to be able to pull the transforms out of this and be able to mess with them and then feed transforms into when we set the world position. What we can do here is we can break the transforms. And here you just uh, pull transforms into location, rotation, and scale. So you can get at these individually. And then let's split struct pin here. And then you can get at the individual X, Y, and Z transforms. So let's move this down. We're going to want to be able to have a way to say which of these we're going to listen to from where. Do we want to take the transforms from here after the interpolation? Or do we want to take the transforms from inside the editor with how we move this empty actor? So let's go ahead and break these transforms as well. And do the same thing. Now let's start to set up our logic. We know that we're going to need switches to be able to control things. You know, enable X, enable Y, enable Z. This is our old one. Let's go to our new one. So let's go ahead and make some booleans. Enable X. We're going to make this editable. We're going to make this a boolean, just a on off compile. So you see on off. Now the state that you leave this here will be the default state of it. So let's go ahead and have the default state to on. 
and then you can control copy paste line and see so let's drag these in control look at your variables So like we stated before, we need to figure out a way to say which transform we're going to listen to. And then down here, we're going to have to build a new vector out of those transforms that we've collected. So the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need variables that we can store these new transforms into to pick which one. So let's go ahead and make a float. And we'll name it new x transform. And we need one for y. And we need one for z. Now we don't need to make these public because we're going to let our logic take care of these. If you hold down Alt, you can get set. So let's start with x. Now, we need a condition. We need to say, OK, if this is yes, then do this. If this is no, then do this. In an Unreal, an if statement, it's called a branch. So this will be our condition. And if it's true, then we want the x transforms through the interpolation. But if it's false, we want the X transforms to come straight from the actor, like so. Now let's go ahead and repeat it for Y and Z. Our conditions. There we go. Now, we have a bunch of different branches, but we only have one chain here. So I always say, OK, we'll do this, and then do this, and then do this. And Blueprints is a thing called Sequence. And that's exactly what it does. It says it comes out of the event, and the event runs this chain, then it'll run this chain, then it'll run this chain, then it'll run this chain. So let's plug this in. This will be 0. This will be 1. This will be two. And then we'll set our transforms down here when everything is all done. But now we don't have anything to set in transforms here. Let's go ahead and plug in Y and Z and Y and Z. We need to make a vector and grab all of this information to be able to put it into our set world transform. So let's go make vector. There we go. And let's grab these transforms that we've just set up here. X, Y, Z. Split the struct pin and set it into transforms here. We compile. We go to our new actor here. We'll see that we have X, Y, and Z. If we turn these all off, it should not move. Great. Now let's go back and let's test X. Now let's move it in X. Grab the cube. Now we see that it follows. If we move it here, it doesn't work. Let's go back and let's test Y. There we go. It works. And now let's test it in Z. There we go. So we've created a nice follow logic. Now, if you go in here and you make a cine camera, and you can put that cine camera under here. You can set it to wherever you want. Uh, I don't know where we are. Grab the cube. There we are. And you can even set it to look at if you like. Um, and now 
if you go through and you animate a sequence and you play it, you'll see that we're now following. And you can make this slower. So it's moving real slow, too slow. There we go. Or you can make it fast. And, it, and you can see, you know, how much you lag behind it. Really not that much at all. There you go. And that's how you make a procedural camera in Unreal Engine.